What makes a web app? Well, a lot of things, but the part you recognize most is the pretty interface, right? Facebook's blue header, Tumblr, simplistic layout, Google's material design. Is that really why you return to these sites? Of course not. It's the content, the pictures of cuisine, your friends' stupid status updates, and how many notifications there are to boost your ego. That's what you really care about in a web app. It's content. It's data. This data lives in your web browser. This data is the quintessential information that you need to make that pretty, pretty web app. This data gives you a simple boundary to get started with web app building. Data provides scope. When you want to build a web app, the first question to likely pop into your head is, "What framework should I use?" Nope. That is not the question. The question is, "What makes a web app?" I can already imagine the obvious answers: HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ruby, MySQL. To hell with your alphabet soup of web technologies. I'm being a bit philosophical here. Fundamentally, what makes a web app? Let's break down your everyday app to get to the heart of that question. No, not Tinder. Let's do a more respectable and simpler example: a person's profile, like the ones you saw on old Facebook before they realized people don't actually want useful features. Anyways, you have your name, a picture of your ugly mug, and foolishly enough, your contact info. Let's break it down. Take away all the pretty UI graphics. Take away the layout. In fact, that image of yours can simply be represented as its file name: profile.jpg. Do you think we're gonna stop there? <laughs> of course not. We can go further. We can generalize this web app, since it isn't the only profile in our app that has a picture, a name, and a contact info. What makes this one different is the picture and the contact info are all associated with your name. Having this association allows us to generalize all the profiles in the web app. The address can just be person that address, and the profile picture can just be person that image. There it is. We can't break it down anymore. This here is the most atomic information necessary to form the idea in your head that we are looking at someone's profile. The details are not filled in, but we know what details will be filled in. More importantly, it will be filled in by the computer automatically. Every web app you see might look intimidating to build from scratch, but that's the pretty UI distracting you. All of them could be broken down the same way into this organized form of data called the model. This model helps discipline us to limit our scope. It's our first step to inform ourselves what exactly needs to be built. When you have an idea for a web app, just ask yourself. How do I model the user, their posts, the car they are requesting, and so on? Once you have a model, how do we tie it back to the UI of our profile, especially when we will reuse this UI over and over again to display different people? To understand how to solve this new problem, imagine that I have a contact card. If you don't know what a contact card is, they were the profile pages from days before computers. You would need a contact card for every person you knew. Not very efficient. So let's imagine that this contact card right here is magical. When I move it into a person's zone, it will reflect their contact info. On the back of the card is our model written down: person dot name, person dot address, person dot favorite pizza. Yeah, I don't need that information, so <laughs> I'll just erase it. Now, when I slide the card into a person's zone. I see all the information except that silly pizza one. Of course, the only place such a magical contact card can live in is in our computer. So I made one. My contact card is a piece of UI that I can move around, and it will reflect the specific data in a specific zone. If you look at the HTML of my UI, my model is specified in there, but the actual name and numbers and all that data is provided only within my zones. Zones provide context. And that is essentially how we can reuse the same UI and the same model in different places in our web app, but have them reflect different pieces of data. This whole idea of creating context in your web app comes from Angular JS, and it is one of the reasons I love creating web apps with it. Context is set by something called dollar sign scope, 
and that is where I pick a specific person in each of my zones. Look again, I state the structure of my app and the model in my HTML, and I state the data and the model in dollar sign scope within my JavaScript code. Even though I have two different languages to describe a web app's data and a web app's structure, they work together like a duet using the model as their common ground.